Hello guys, welcome to Monkey's Paper Palooza Craft Corner. Today I am going to be talking about gelatos and some techniques and tips on how to use them. Now if you've never seen a gelato, this is it. It's a little gel crayon made by Favor, Favor Castell. They come in a slew of colors that you can get in both basics as well as metallics. And I think I almost have every color. They were my first tool I've ever used. Like this one, it's a gold metallic, as you can see by the clear lid. But they also come in solids as well as colored metallics. Like this is a metallic grape. And as you can see, it's got that metallic tint to it. Like I said, these were the first medium I played with because you can have a lot of fun with these. Um, they're almost like the Tim Holtz Distress Crayons, but they're a little bit more jelly. So let's go into making some panels with this. So first thing I'm gonna say is you can use them two ways. One way is a plain watercolor paper or cardstock. I chose watercolor because I was gonna use some water with it. And the other way is gessoed. Gessoing, you would just use basic acrylic gesso. But what it does with these is it helps you be able to do direct on paper with it. And don't mind, I did get a little bit of purple on this paper because I, when I was showing you the metallic -y, I got some on my finger of that grape. Um, but yes, you can just color these right on the panel. And this one is a metallic kind of corally color. It's really fun. So it has a little bit of metallic in it. The other one just was a plain solid color as well as this. I find the metallics are a little bit creamier. I can't see it if you see that one, but a lot of them have the names on the top, like that's a metallic melon. This one sadly did not. I'm not sure which color that was. You can definitely get those and do your research and see what colors you want. But they usually are sold in like packs of four for the basics, or you can even get larger packs with the whole mix. I have seen some people see them as gel crayons by Faber Castell, and you get more of the solids and not the metallics, but still they're sometimes a little cheaper that way. And as you see, I'm able to move this pretty well with my finger. And that is because of the gesso. I will show you in a little bit what happens when you put it on just basic paper and why it moves better on the gesso. Oops, except when you wrinkle your paper. That's all right. It won't show when I'm done. Um, the key is also to wash your fingers in between because it does get messy. It is a gel medium. So it does, of course, leave some residue on your fingers. I mean, you can do this with the ink blending tool too. I will do a technique later on where I show how you can blend them with the ink blending tool. But I want to show you that you don't need any fancy tools to use these fingers. All right, so like I said, we're gonna show you on regular watercolor paper. This is regular watercolor paper. You can move it, but it will not move as well. And you will get a little halo where you colored um, versus getting that more even texturing throughout. You can see it a little bit better with this yellow. You'll see your scribble lines. So for direct on paper, you need to gesso. Um, also another trick, if you want to blend it a little better, a wipe will do. And if you do it really lightly, you can blend them really nicely and it makes the color kind of cover more evenly. Um, as you switch colors though, make sure to switch sides of your wipe. That way you don't contaminate your colors unless that's what you're looking for. And you can just blend them into each other very nicely with this. And you can do that with gesso or even on regular paper. Now, if you go too hard, you will remove. This is why I wanted to go hard just to show you. It will lighten your color. No big deal if this happens to you. I'm going to show you quickly what you can do. Get your favorite Castell gelato back out and reapply. And sometimes this works good too uh, when it's wet because it actually glides a little bit more easily. As you can see, I'm sitting there gliding with my finger. And I'm just going to do my fingers, just keep on smearing it in. So, baby wipes, another basic tool you can get. 
And of course, I'll show you here on the watercolor paper what it does. And it does spread very nicely with this, though you do get a fainter, more pastel application when you add the baby wipe. But as you see, you see that coloring marks where, where I color it directly on the paper. It won't get off there. It's so, so it kind of soaks right into the paper. The gesso actually makes it sit on top of the paper longer, so it's easier for you to smear. So that's gessoed and basic. So for this next one, I wanted to do this on plain, good old watercolor paper. We are going to do a resist technique with it. So any of your basic, let's just say, background stamps you have, you can also do it with stencils. Um, though it's a little bit more trickier, you have to use a blending tool with it. I find it is easier to do it this way. I mean, have fun with your gelatos. They are a fun medium to do it. There are videos everywhere of different techniques to do it. Um, I just chose a few that I've done particularly myself to show you today. So that way, if you have these, or if you've been looking into these and you're not sure what you could do with them, the possibilities are endless. Well, it's gonna put my magnets on there and I put my paper in a corner to start with, but I'm gonna show you, I ended up having to move my stamp over because I, I forgot this is a rubber stamp, it's gonna hit the sides and it's not gonna go down. So I'm gonna try showing you with this where I goofed up here first. <laughs> And I will fix this as we go on. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna emboss with white embossing powder on this panel. And what I'm using is basic Canson 90 pound watercolor paper. And like I said, it got stuck a little bit. So I end up having to move my stamp over to the edge of the grid. I don't know why I put it over the grid. So it fits in perfectly. And now I'm just gonna flip my paper over. <laughs> and put it more towards the center. So that way I get in the center of design and don't get an edge on it. So since there's still tons of my embossed on there, I'm just gonna go for it and not reapply. Um, trick with these, I'm using the palm of my hand, but if it does sometimes go easier if you're not using a stamping tool to just put your paper on top of the stamp and prior the back of the paper. A nice little trick for if you don't have a stamp perfect, because it's pretty hard to find a acrylic block that is big enough to do a stamp this big. And I do love the stamp. I do find that the stamp, of course, sometimes it doesn't stamp down all the way. It does kind of have spots that it gets missed sometimes, but that's fine. I like the vintagey kind of distressed look anyway, so to me that works perfect. So I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna do it for two panels. Um, because I'm going to do two different techniques with these embossed panels for you. So I'm going to do this one a little faster because we've already seen me this, do this process once. No reason to take time showing it twice in the same speed. So yes, Recollections White Embossing Powder, you can do it with clear too. I've even seen it done with black. Um, though black gloss does work better versus a matte. And any detail embossing powder works great. So after heat setting these, the first technique, oops, let me get these out of the way. And sorry for the crooked video. Somehow I moved my camera, I don't know how. It'll get better as we go along. Um, chose a silver, um, the metallic mint, and I believe it is the aqua blue, I can't remember. I'm going to do this directly on there. And I know I've told you, watercolor paper, don't do it direct. But when you have a thick pattern like this embossing, embossed pattern on this panel, it's not going to matter. Not enough of it's going to show where you had streaks. Now, they give you a little, you just saw me pull off that before I started using the blending tool, the little stick. Sometimes they come in your kits. They do the same thing, but... I find it's easier and it's cheaper to just use my Tim Holtz Ranger blending tool. It has the same kind of sponge applicator and it blends it just as well. And you actually get a better application because you have a better surface, bigger surface to blend with and better stick really. Because a little stick, sometimes the sponges fall off them. 
So if you get those in your kit, that's what those are. But basically, you can just, if you don't, don't worry. You can do this with a blending tool. And I will leave links to all my supplies, like always, down below so that you guys can look at them and make your tools up to date if you don't have some of these tools. Now, once again, you can do this with a wipe to make the kind of the white embossing show better because you're saying, well, I can't see the embossing now. It will whiten as you use it. But for these, I found it kind of dulls my color and I don't want to dull the color on this panel. I want this panel to be vibrant. So I'm going to go actually with a Swiffer dry cloth and just go over it and it will wipe off the color just as well as a wet wipe will. In fact, I think it actually does it a little better. And you get that still that intensity of your color. So just keep in mind if you use a wet wipe, your colors are going to fade. If you don't, and you dry cloth it, your colors will be intense. Now, these gelatos can also be used as a watercolor medium. So put a little bit on your mat or your glass mat like I have here. Wet it, any non-porous surface. Use a plastic bag if you have to. Um, and wet it down and you can actually spread it with a water brush. And just keep on as you need. Put a little bit more down if you don't have enough. And just keep blending it in. And you can just paint it on there. And it does the same technique. Um, you do get a fainter result as you see that that silver is very faint, but it's still there. So the fun thing about these gelatos is I find they're very much like a gelled distress crayon. They're more creamy in texture than the distress crayons. You don't have to use water with them. Unlike the distress crayons because they're more jelly, they spread better. But they're very similar. But they're very fun and very versatile to use. I mean, you can use them as a watercolor. You can use them as a spreading medium. You can color ribbon with it. Um, I just say it. You can tie your ribbon to match your gelatos. You just put it on the ribbon. Use a little baby wipe. Wipe, wipe, done. So they have a lot of versatility. That's why they were the first one medium I tried as I was exploring paper crafting and stuff. I thought they were fascinating and the way that they worked, they gave you a wide range of ways to use it. I also show you, you can even use them to make colored sprays too. Um, a lot of people use their perfect pearls. You can also use this. And now you can see the detail. See, same embossing, different technique different hue brighter and lighter and that's the thing when you use water it's going to be lighter when you just put the medium right on there you're going to get a darker result now i'm also going to show you how like i said you can use this like a watercolor medium you can do the smooshing effect with it just add your water with your mister and i'm going to show you this two ways because some people may not have mini misters some people may not do it but later on, I'll also show you how to do it with a water brush or just brush with water. And that way you can get the same effect. Because I know sometimes we just don't have these tools. It happens, we're building our crafting tool kit and we just don't have everything yet. But there are ways to make the same effects without the tools. And as you see, I'm getting a little, the little droplets of the gel medium, which is fine. And don't forget, don't waste your stuff. Make another panel. I'm going to do a little tiny pin hill that I'll use in a future card sometime down the road. And I'll have it already made. So why waste that beautiful color that you have all over your surface? And I do have to say, I love this glass mat. It's so easy to clean. And I can do a lot of things on it. Now this... I'm going to do in the purples, but here I'm not going to use a mister. I'm going to use my water brush. And this is that metallic grape. It looks really faint on here, but it actually is very vibrant once it's on there. And then I got this one also that's very pretty purple. And this one's almost like a light lavender. 
like I said, there's so many colors in these too. You can start with one color family and just go from there or pick the color families you use a lot. Go from there. Like I said, you can get them as little as four packs. I've seen some for 12 packs for $12 in places. It depends on what you can get them for sale. So I just put my water brush on that and I just spread out my paints together. That way they're all wet, just like I did with a mister. So you don't need a mister to do this technique. You can do this with a little bit of water and a brush. If you don't have a water brush, you can do it with a mister. It's just water and basically this paint medium. Which these gel mediums are basically a paint medium. All right. So now I want to show you something else. Now, as you see, I got this beautiful stamp set. This one's by Stampen Stampendious. These are beautiful little flowers. I'll put a link down below for you for what they're called and everything. But they're really fun. They're almost like a dandelion. It's really cute. Now, you see me put them directly on there. You see me paint with them. But did you know you could stamp with them? You can. So I'm going to take three colors. I believe it's the champagne, the gold, yep, gold champagne. I believe the other one is the rose gold and the pistachio. And I'm just going to go along the stamp with them. And depending how you want to do this, I mean, you could go on them directly with a gel medium and get kind of like a block stamp thing. But I'm going to use water. I'm going to use my mister. And I'm going to add, activate this with water, kind of get a watercolored effect. So just smear that on there. And then mist it down with your mister just to activate the colors. So very much like the crayons and the distress markers that you can do that with also. Now this one came out really watery because I got a lot of water on there. So I'm going to dab it down and add a little bit more of that color on there. As you see, you can get it very watercolored. Or if you just want to do it mildly, I'll put another panel in here. I'm just going to go on here with it being still a little wet. Just add some more of this. And don't worry about getting mixing your colors. You can wipe them those gel medium down there. It doesn't contaminate. Just wipe it on a piece of towel or your finger and just wipe off the color and you'll be back to good as new. Or if you get really bad, you can even cut some of it off. And just push it down. I had very little water left on this, so I got more of a stamped watercolor effect. So depending on what kind of look you're looking for, if you want the intense kind of watery look, you just spray that bugger down and stamp it. If you want something that's a little bit more controlled, a little less water, sometimes works better. Or wetting your stamp and then adding the color will give you that less intense. Another thing you can do, like I said, is you can make your own glitter sprays. So I'm going to take my mister, and I have this beautiful white pearl color. And you just take a palette knife, and you just cut some down off it. And you just unscrew your cap, just like you would do with your perfect pearls. Just stick it in there. I find using this actually it sticks better than the Perfect Pearls because you still got that gel medium in there too that's kind of like the bonding agent to keep that glitter on your paper. And it does make a very beautiful sheen. I have yet to see it clog my bottles. So, you know, shake it up like crazy. It does take a lot of shaking sometimes more than the Perfect Pearls do because you got those clumps. And you want to make sure you get those clumps pretty well mixed. Like I'm checking to see if I have any clumps, letting it settle a little bit. And always make sure you have some space between the top of your mister and that. So I'm going to spray some on this panel that we did previously and let it dry. I'll show you later on in the video when we make the card with it, that sheen that you're going to get. It's kind of hard to see like this. So let me show you on black paper. That way you see it. Now you see that? Isn't it easier to see that that way? 
you see that pearlescent shine in it. It's a great way to make a quick pearl shimmer liquid. Now, don't be trapped in thinking you just have to use these on white either. Gelatos work also on black or colored papers. The sky is the limit with this material. It's very much like the Distress Oxides. It can go in any color. It's opaque enough that it will show. So white, black. I don't know if you can see the pearl yet. It's probably still too wet. And as you see, you get these little, as you can see, you get these little specks in here. It's fine. You can rub those down with a wet cloth or just leave them. Sometimes the specks are fun. But yeah, depending on what you're looking at, this is all the stuff you can do with it. And there's more things you can do. It. You can even make, look at, like I said, you can even make glitter spray. It's fantastic. But like I said, it works on black paper too. It doesn't have to be just metallics. Like this is a metallic also, so probably not a good thing to show you. But you can even use the colors. Oops, this is a little off screen, but you'll, it'll come down in a minute. Um, you can use any color. It it shows up on black. And of course you don't have a black, so it won't be an issue with black on black. So there you go. Look gelato. You get a little messy, but it's fun. Um, you can't have fun unless you get messy. See, there's that little bit of that pink showing, as you can see. So on these cards, I also am going to be featuring the Ultim New Vintage Rose stamp set. So I want to show you two ways you can stamp layered stamps. Most people know the technique where you use the biggest stamp and you move down to the last layer. So I'm going to show you that way first. Now, sometimes this can be a little bit harder for lining up. And you'll get kind of a weird effect sometimes where the layers don't hit right. And it's trial and error. So I'm going to go through this and show you that. So I did my first layer in the lightest color, which I believe is the Lulu Lavender. And now I'm going in with, I believe it's the Perfect Plum. As you see, it kind of slips a little bit. And then I'm going to go in with another next color, which I believe is, I think I ended up using, let me get that lined up, there we go. Yeah, this is a grape jelly, I believe. All right, so let's look at those layers. I mean, it's a nice layering, sort of. It's a little off, and thus the colors look a little bit, almost like you're looking at one of those 3D books. But I'm going to show you another trick. Now, it makes your colors a little bit more muted, but it does work, too. And it's called reverse layered stamping. So you will start with your darkest tone, your last layer. Oops, and I have a little bit of residue of ink still in there, but it's fine. We're going to go back over it anyway. And you're just going to do it backwards. Now, this effect does give you more of a haloed effect, so you get a softer hue. So depending on what you're looking for, if you want bright, vibrant colors, keep on trying it the other way. Because, honestly, the darker color will become the more vibrant. But this way, I also find it's a little bit easier to line up. Because your last layer is framing what you just did. Versus trying to make everything match up with your last layer. So, as you see, I got that color. And as you can see, it's already going on a little straighter. And the last one is going to be the Lululab. I never thought of stamping this way until I watched someone the other day. And I went, I never thought of backwards stamping. And I always did it the first way. 
and I was like, oh, they never match up. It's so horrible. I don't know how I can ever make these perfect. And then I went, wow, that really does make it a little easier. And it makes your colors a little softer, as you can see. And as your ink dries too, the lighter color will almost pastel down your darker colors. So that it blends it a little bit better also. So a little trick too, as you always wondered, how do these master people do it? Apparently they do it this way. And as you see, it softened those colors and it makes it more softer. So there's a little trick for you guys. Now I have stamped a gazillion of these little roses in their leaves and cut them out with the matching dies I had with the kit. So I'm gonna start with this panel that we did with the smooshing. And I'm gonna adhere some foam to that, but I'm putting a lot of foam, a lot of adhesive on the back of it, only because the panel was wet and it was a little warped. So I'm just gonna lay this down. And I'm going to just lay out these roses. I have yellow and pink for this card because I thought it really contrasted the blues and the teals in this color. I didn't want to keep this one monotone. I wanted the colors to be very springy and bright because I'm going to make this a wedding card. And I felt that sometimes you have those beautiful pastels in your card. So I got this beautiful pink mesh ribbon. I love this. This is by Ofray. Um, I get it actually at Walmart. Um, but it's really nice. And it takes the adhesive really well on my runner. Because it's the perfect width. And it actually lays down and doesn't show too many bubbles like satin can. And I'm just going to adhere these little roses just plain on this paper. No... 3D effects on this, I'm just going to go and lay these out. Because there's different ways you can make your cards. If you want 3D, go for it. If you want just to have a flat, basic card with no different layers of 3D, why not? I mean, there's so many ways to make a card. And I'm just going to stick all these layers together on this card. I have to say, I really fell in love with this little stamp set. At first, when I saw it from Altenio, I was like, eh, I don't know. I'm not really a rose person. But I have to say, when I saw the cards that people made with them, I was like, okay, maybe this is a lot better than I thought it was. I haven't really used all aspects. There's a lot of little branches and different other little aspects. And there's so many different ways to layer your leaves. I just... I just went through the basics so I can make some quick ones for those card sets. Now I'm going to take some gray paper and I'm going to make a sentiment. But I changed my mind. I was going to do it in the light gray and I decided no. I'm going to do this in the same craft I'm going to use for my card form. That way it very blends very well. So with my anti-stag tool, I'm going to put in the little sentiment that came with this kit that says, Happy Wedding. And I am going to use some silver glitter embossing powder from Hero Arts just to give it a little bling. Because there's a little bit of metallic speck in that background. Hard to see in the video. But... In person, you've got that metallic mint into it. So after heat embossing it and setting it, I'm going to put some foam tape behind it. And I'm going to set this raised after I did a little slash. Tap. And also I'm using my Friskers kit. I will add that also on the link down below. It has tons of beautiful little sentiments in it. And this one I decided to do the congrats in the rosebud pink inside. So I'm going to get this panel ready to adhere to my card while that ink is drying inside it. 
And then I'm going to line this up. I just thought gray looked really classy with the colors in this card. And it made it very soft. And then I'm going to put this down on the bottom. Now to embellish this card, I am going to add some of my Aurora Borealis rhinestones that we have on Monkey's Paper Palooza. I am actually currently revamping our supply line, so you're going to see a lot of changes going on in the next probably couple months. Um, new packaging, new sizes of packaging, because I've had some people saying, I really wish you had bigger packs, and I hear you people, so we are working on that. But, but definitely check out what we've got right now. As things change, I will change the listings. It's going to be a gradual process. The new stuff is going to get phased in before some of the previous stock. So definitely keep your eyes open for that. So I am adhering these little rhinestones on there. Isn't that beautiful? With that little silver glitter. And you can sort of see the shine. Like I said, there's some shine in it. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. And there's my little rose cluster. Now here is that panel that I stamped the flower with the gelato. Now this one I decided to make into a very simple, clean note card. So I'm going to start by adhering my panel to some craft foam, just to give it that extra raise and make it stick out just a little bit on the card form. And I've got this almost creamy oatmeal colored mesh ribbon that I'm going to add to the bottom of this card. I'm going to try to do this as straight as I can, though sometimes even with the grids I get off straight, but I did pretty good that time. And most of the times I have to say this ribbon doesn't buckle, but I just noticed I have a little buckle there. Something got in the way with the adhesive or it balled up a little bit, but that's fine. So now I'm going to adhere this panel to the card form. Since I'm not putting a sentiment inside, I'm going to adhere it right away. And I have these beautiful little mocha pearls that I'm going to add. They're, I believe, a four millimeter pearl. And I believe we do have them on the shop also. Or at least last time I checked, we still have them on the shop. I'll leave a link down below if we do. But I'm just going to stick these around the flowers just to act as little seeds floating in the air. Now, I wasn't going to put a sentiment, but I decided, you know what, let's do it. So from the same first girl kit that I showed previously, um, I chose Yep, there is the thing. Do small things with great love. And I'm going to do that in white embossing. So I'm going to end up using my Recollections white embossing powder. So I'm going to use my embossing pad to get that on there. And here comes the white embossing powder. Michaels has tons of great Mother's Day sales. I don't know if you've checked them out, but there is tons going on right now. And I'm going to use some of my scotch adhesive mounting squares to mount this sentiment on there. And I was going to do it right on the ribbon, and I decided I didn't want to. So I'm going to do it right up there, just to give it some texture. So for this card, I'm trying to decide whether I want to go sideways or vertical or horizontal. Vertical. Let's go vertical. And I have those flowers stamped in blue. And I believe the text colors I used were the sky blue, the Dombe blue, the Bahama blue, and the Paris dusk for those. But very fun colors. And like I said, you see how soft the layers are with those flowers? That is because I did that backwards stamping. See how it melds it? It kind of like blends it better, I feel. And I, I 
because I always like, how come theirs always looks so much softer and so much more blended than mine do? And it's because they do it that way. I, it never dawned on me to do it that way myself. So I'm practicing with the layout here and I'm doing, you are my favorite or you're my favorite in the Paris dusk from that same Friskers kit. There's, like I said, tons of sentiments in it. And there's some that are fun. There's some that are more soft. You know, they're just great little sentiments to add to cards and stuff. And I'm just going to adhere these little blue flowers. I'm going to start with the biggest flowers in the back with the, the larger leaves. And I'm going to stick little leaves onto these little blue flowers so that they're already attached to them. All right, so the last one I want to pop up. So I'm going to use my foam mounting squares after I get the leaf on there. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a 3D raise. I'm just making sure everything's sitting in there. Good. There we go. Something was up a little bit. And using the same gray craft I used in the other one, I am putting the happy anniversary that came with the Concord and not the Concord, the Alta New kit. Last video, we used tons of Concord and I. This time we're doing Alta New. I'm having so much fun adding different brands to my collection and. I really hadn't ever had an all to new kit, and I'm actually very impressed with this one. I love their, their, so far their layering kits are very impressive. So this one, I'm just going to put the sentiment right across there like a ribbon. And I'm going to cut off the edges, of course. And now I'm going to mount this to my card that should be all nice and dry now inside. Look at that, not that darling. Now, to give it a little bit of extra, I'm going to use the sapphire and green ombre pearls. We do have them on the shop. They are so much fun. And I'm going to use those in the three and the four millimeter size. I think I have them right now on the shop in a mix. I mean, last time I checked, I had them in the mix. Um, but I am working on possibly getting us some just single size kits too, because I know some people like the smaller ones. Some people like all the sizes possible. I know I pull more out the three and the fours myself. And there's that card. Now, I'm going to play now with this purple smooshed background we did. And this one, I am going to do horizontal. So I kind of lost a few bit of my clip, which is fine. Um, my camera ran out of battery. Um, but I did put some foam adhesive squares on some, the roses. I bunched them together and heared them together and then put that in the back. And I'm going to dress this up this panel up with a little bit more of some purple mesh ribbon that I also have from Ofray. And trying to put this on straight, but somewhat apparently can't. Apparently I need to eyeball, not use my grid. And in the perfect plum or sweet plum, excuse me, I am putting on do small things with great love. And I'm going to adhere this panel so it's ready to go to my card form. And now I'm just trying to figure out where I want to place it. And I think I'm going to go with my original choice, which was off to the left. That way I can put my sentiment on the right. So for my sentiment, I am doing the happy wedding that came with the Alta New kit. 
once again, doing a bunch of wedding and anniversary cards because you know what? June is coming and that is wedding season. So as us card makers know, we end up going to lots of weddings. In fact, I know one of my family members is going to be getting married soon, so hopefully I'll be able to get some cards ready for her. I just kind of kitty-cornered it off the ribbon. I didn't want it to be directly on the ribbon. Now this one I'm going to use some more of the Aurora Borealis rhinestones. I decided that I have purple pearls, but I didn't want to use it on this card. So with my, of course, my pick-me-up tool, I'm just going to pick these babies up and just sit here them down. Uh, many people have asked, what's the best tool for adhering sequins and rhinestones and embellishments? I would say that. But wax paper, wax pencils work well, too. I am thinking about getting some for the shop, too, so that you guys can team them up with your embellishments you're buying. Or maybe I'll make some package deals, too. We'll see. All right. So on to this new card. We are going to start by putting in the sentiment inside. I'm choosing congrats. That's from that Friskers kit. Like I said, that will be linked down below if you're interested in ordering that so that you can have all those fun sentiments. And I cut some purple foam to go behind this card. Oop, and I got some little bit in the way here. And a correction, the other one was not the purple smooshing, it was the watercolored. I don't know why I said it was the smooshed one, it was not. It was the watercolored embossed one. I think it's because I knew I was using the purple roses. Alright, so we are going to stick these purple roses around there. And I want one to be behind it and the other one to be on top of the ribbon. So that kind of gave them a layered look. And this one I am also going to be doing in a horizontal versus vertical card. And I'm going to use some more of that beautiful purple ribbon. I wish I could link them on there to order them. But sadly, I have not seen them online. I've only seen them in store. So I don't know if it's something they carry online. So definitely check that out if you are interested in that mesh ribbon. They come in a bunch of beautiful colors from soft pinks to brighter colors. I think I have a, like every color in my collection. So I'm going to add this panel onto this beautiful lilac card form. And I did, like I said, give some one to add some dimension to this. So I kind of foam backed the smaller rows so that it's a little bit, kind of rises above the ribbon and gives it some texture and dimension. Now on some gray craft, I'm going to put on another sentiment. And this one is going to be also happy wedding. Like I said, I'm trying to make a bunch of wedding and anniversary cards. Because like I said, it's the season. Now, I'm just using basic silver detailed embossing powder from Hero Arts for this one. It's shiny and gives it some fun stuff. Now, this one I decided to put directly on the ribbon. Because this one, I have a lot of space there. And I figured I might as well cover up some of that space with it. And it also gives it a slightly different look. Now this one, I've been pulling out some of my amethyst pearls. I do have these on the site, I believe, in a mix. I do not have them in singles yet. Um, but they are beautiful, vibrant, dark purple. And I'm going to put a bunch of dots with my multi-medium. My glue of choice, usually, because it comes in matte as well as gloss. And I always love the matte because most papers I use are, of course, matte in texture. And it dries super clear and matte. 
so that your glue does not show behind your embellishment. I'm about to invest in some glue pens too to try to use when with my die cuts. So hopefully I can show some of those to you in the future. And there's that card. Now this is going to be our last card. And this is that vibrant panel I did with my fingers in a what baby way. Most simplest tools you can get. All right, so I stamped my love in rosebud pink inside of my card form. And now I'm getting my panel ready to put some foam on the back. And like the other one, they got a little wet when I put all the sprays and did the techniques on them. So I'm putting lots of adhesive just to hold them down. And as you see, there's that sheen. I sprayed, remember I put the spritz on there and I said it will shine when it dries. There's that shine. And this one, I'm also using the pinks and the yellow roses together. Because for some reason, I really love those combos. And I felt the colors were just beautiful on this panel. So I'm trying to figure out how to stagger them so that they're not all together. And I have lots of little embellishments to add to with the leaves. So I'm just trying to figure out how I might want to sprig them together. I might end up changing it around as I lay it out with the adhesive, but for now, this is my thought process. All right, so I'm gonna start with my leaves and my big flowers. So I'm gonna add some adhesive. And as you see, I ripped one by accident, but that's okay. Sometimes if you can try to line them up, you can stick them back down and nobody will ever notice. And that's exactly what I just did there. All right, so I got those two big roses on there. And now I'm going to stagger out the other roses. But before I do any effects on there, I want to make sure I get this on my card form. Because sometimes trying to adhere adhesive on a 3D affected panel is hard. It bubbles it and you don't get a good stick. So before I do any 3D movement here with my mounting squares, I'm going to make sure I do that. But as you see, I'm putting a little bit of glue on the corners so that I can adhere the leaves to these. I'm just going to put some of these squares on there just to give this bunch of roses some 3D effects. Now, I was going to 3D mount this little pink one and decided I think I'd rather tuck it. So I'm going to tuck that one and just adhere it. And I'm going to put a little bit more adhesive underneath that leaf so it sticks back down. And now I'm going to also try to find a home for this little leaf here. There we go. I like to do these cards. It kind of showed how you can do almost vintagey feels things with these roses as well as more abstract, more artistic. Um, and it still gives you a beautiful effect either way. And it, I guess it may, it maybe shows that roses are kind of universal. They can be very soft and elegant or they can be fun and funky. Um, but I really love doing it this way. So for the sentiment, I'm taking some golden craft and I'm going to put on the happy anniversary that came with the kit. So in total, it's going to be happy anniversary, my love. So a great card to give to wife who loves vibrant pinks and colors. I did that, I believe, in the white embossing powder, the snow from Recollections. Now, I'm going to play around and try to figure out where I want to put the sentiment. I was going to put it underneath the roses, but then I realized I think I really want to tuck it in between them. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to maneuver that. And I think right under that leaf. And there we go. I think that's really fun like that. And it gives it some dimension. Now I'm going to frame this with some of more of my ombre pearls. I'm going to use my orange and pink ombre pearls are also sold in a mix. Like I said, we're in the process of making new size variations available. Um, it's a slow process, but we're getting there. Um, I also have a new line coming in soon too of Aurora Borealis pearls. that are really beautiful also. So look forward to that. Those are going to come in single sizes, not mixes. 
Um, but I'm really excited to see those and use those when they come in. But look at there. There's that card. Isn't that pretty? And look at that sheen. All right. So in all, like I said, you got this very abstract -y color, very stamped, beautiful image. A very variation and a lot of flowers, which is perfect for note cards, weddings, anniversaries, any occasion. But look at the differences. All this was made with gelatos and ink. Just think about that and paper. You know, that was the hand smushing. That was the smooshing on the paper as well as with this one. And then, of course, the embossed resist. This one, of course, doing it one with watercolor, one with the dauber, and then just plain stamping. Now, look at that shine in those gelatos. Those metallic gelatos have a beautiful shine to them, and you can see the texture you get with them. So I hope you like this video, and if you do, please check our last upload, as well as check out one that was specially curated just for you. Now, we also welcome you to subscribe to our channel, so click up on this link. And also check out our website where you can sign up for our mailing list to get deals and coupons, as well as our weekly newsletter.